just ran over to one of our language schools. It's before operation, so there's nobody here. I did a mile and a quarter with this pack on again, just trying to identify hot spots. And I'm waiting for JC to arrive. We're gonna play some table tennis and talk about the new pack, which he hasn't seen yet, except in video. If you wanna check out my other video, with this pack, I ran a 10K in the Shenggang race with 11 pounds in this pack. It's just kind of a challenge, testing out the pack, kind of, kind of fun. I was late to the race. One thing to note uh, today in this probably 90 degree heat running over here, this Deuter Trail Pro aims to have this air contact like duct coming up the middle and I can tell you from experience, you're not gonna feel any air going through there. Better than nothing, and it you know feels good to have this padding, but as far as heat reduction, it was still hot. Hey, you brought your pack. Brought my pack. I ran over here with mine. Whoa. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, it is hot. All right, what's your victory speech? Oh, uh, your crane, your oh, crane. Yeah. This is how he beat me. <laughs> that, that scared me. Despite all my efforts, I even wore orange because I thought the ball would get lost in my shirt and he would lose and I wore an orange hat. Yeah. It didn't didn't work, did it? No. It, was, it definitely made things interesting. <laughs> yes. We had it was close. I got a game off of you. Ooh. Yeah. But you got two. So yeah. let's talk about backpacks. Okay. When you were walking with Matsu. Yeah. I mean, the, it seemed like at the beginning you were there with like the five of them for the fireworks and then suddenly they disappeared. Yeah. You were on your uh, well, the thing is, I had to go to the bathroom. I didn't want people to wait for me. Also, my intention going into it was mm -hmm. to get, you know, as much distance as I could. Okay. And I, I didn't think that was their goal. They wanted to kind of, mm -hmm. some of them wanted to be close to Matsu. Like, and I didn't want to get into the crowds oh, that much. Mm -hmm. Although, when I went over Dajia Bridge, mm -hmm. Uh, that it was shoulder to shoulder and I had, uh, did I tell you this? No, no. I don't know if this is going to air. Yeah, you <laughs> I put a soft this, flask down my shorts oh. because you know, people all around me oh. and I couldn't, I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't know what to I do. Guess, I guess that was, yeah. the problem was the soft flask was like bunching up because I was wearing those tights, those a tunis oh, yeah, yeah, tights. Yeah. So I went behind a car and did the same thing and I carried it for a while until I could dump it out. <laughs> when I took it home, I told Kitty about it. She's like, throw that away. Oh, <laughs> I threw it away. I threw away the soft flask. It's I have a, a lot of them. Is it a, like the one you gave me? Oh, yeah. Those are good quality. No. All these I, know. I kept the straw though, because I didn't think that touched. Oh. <laughs> I peed in a oh, soft flask. Yeah. Solomon, compensate me. Send me one. I don't care if you guys know. Walked to Dadu. And if I do it again next year, I'd like to go from Dadu uh, as far as and start in the morning. Maybe mm -hmm. you can join me. Yeah, yeah. And go back to Zhanghua. And even further, maybe maybe to Yuanling and take the train oh. back. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. In the early morning yeah. before it gets too hot. Yeah. yeah. So it's a plan. We can think about it. I didn't really realize there's there was another Mazu pilgrimage going on. Mm -hmm. You seem to know more about that. Well, all I know is that that one started in Miaoli and it uh, went through Zhanghua on the way to Guken, which is in Yunling. Uh -huh. So I don't think it's as far as the Dajia pilgrimage. Right, which goes to Jai and back, yeah. over 300 kilometers. Yeah. So yeah. that one, the Bai, how do you say it? Bai -sh? Baisha something. Baisha. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. we're born. <laughs> Lots of pilgrims who were just mm. sleeping right out on the sidewalk. Mm, I on, saw some sleeping on Saturday night around the in Chengong Park yeah. near my house. Yeah. I love to check out their gear. Oh, yeah. A lot of them have packs yeah. like this. Oh, by the way, I have a milk up here. Milk in the cranium. Ooh. I just picked that. 
Okay. It's still cold. Your choice again. Okay. So you guys at home, join us. Classic blue. Or maybe have a beer, but it's morning for us, so. Classic You're doing classic blue? Classic afternoon Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I just woke up at noon. <laughs> so it's, it's like my morning. <laughs> what you time did you wake up? Yeah, I had a banana and uh, some bread. I'm doing dance Dionysus. Oh, okay. Smells nice. Yeah. If you want to skip to the review, um, you know, I'll put it down here where that starts. Mm. But just some announcements. First of all, you were hurt. Mm. So would you like to tell I that, did. that story? I okay, so I was doing a, a, a kind of easy run around the, the hills near where I live. It's called Baguashan. And there is a special type of tree in, in the mountains there, which has a huge uh, seed. And the seed is actually inside a hard shell. And it's like that big. And yeah, it's probably about that big. And what happens is that these shells will drop from the tree and they will break on the road and splinter into many pieces. And they will release a kind of cottony white uh, material which has some seeds inside. Anyway, so I was doing a, a run down, down a hill, pretty steep incline actually, and I stepped on one of those shells and I turned my ankle inward. So it was pretty painful. Um, I kept walking for probably another 30 minutes. Um, Just to kind of test it yeah, out? Yeah, I thought, well, actually, after 10 or 15 minutes, it seemed the pain seemed to disappear. Yeah, I'm here at Huan Xi Yuan, where I almost did something really bad to my ankle. Behind me and in front of me are the trees that that have these seeds that fall down and they will break on the road. And you really have to be careful. But today, someone has, has swept up all the, all the leaves and all the shells. So I can't find any except on the side of the road. Let me show you what they look like. But when I got home and iced it, it was really bad. And I could hardly walk that night. <clears throat> so the next morning I, I woke up and it was a lot better. So I didn't need to go see a doctor or anything. Did you lay off for a little bit? Yeah, I haven't done any running in three days. Okay. Yeah. Probably best. And but um, it's good you said it didn't get discolored. Nope. No discoloration, um, no blue, no black. And you have a, a brace? And I'm wearing a brace here. Yeah. yeah. It's did actually, you go out and buy that, or did you run? Um, no, we oh. have one. Joanne had one. Okay. And it fits me perfectly, so... <clears throat> wow, really Joanne helps. must have big feet. <laughs> or those or things. My feet are small. <laughs> or, the, or the compression allows it's, for... It's elastic. You can see it's elastic, right? What's well, the brand name on that? see it? Let me show you. It's quite nice. Uh, I like those socks, too. Are those yeah. for running? Here it is. Yeah, these oh. are running socks. I, I bought these at the, I think, at the camping shop. Um, Quechua. Quechua, you never heard of that? There's... Is that the same name as your backpack? The other backpack? I don't remember. Because you made a video of your backpacks, and okay. I remember, Was one is a Tunis, that's this, this, is this one. one yeah. And the okay. other one, I thought you said something like Quechua. Okay, okay, maybe it's yeah. the same. I need sugar. Are you planning to run like tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I, I hope I can get out and test my ankle, my foot. Because you have a half. Yeah, I'm doing a half marathon in Fengyuan, which is a small town, 20 minutes drive from my house. Yeah, this one is flat. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. So it's wow. all flat. Kind of so, wish I would have signed up for that. Yep. I'm still having, being bugged by the plantar fasciitis if I go really long. Oh, you have that, and then we both signed up for... I signed up for Sunling C. Good, that's a great Not great the race. one that I, so I'm gonna ditch the first Sunling C because you're a crazy man. You're gonna run a half marathon and the mm. next day mm. we're gonna do Snow mm. Mountain. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You're a beast, man. No, it's just a half marathon. 
<laughs> and by the way, okay. that's not something you see. That's in, oh. that's in Zhushan, which is closer to Shito. Oh, okay. Same kind of area. Uh, yeah, I guess it is similar. Okay. But suddenly you see it's much higher. All right. Yeah. It's well, is that, are we going to feel elevation on that run, actually? It's over 2,000 meters high. Okay. Yeah. It's a mountain half, yeah. half marathon. Yes. I'm yes. excited for that. Yeah, so I am mm. not going to do the Zhushan, Zhushan. Okay. even though I signed up, because mm. I don't think it's fair for my wife to just be gone for so long. Looks like an eclair. <laughs> I think it's just bread with chocolate icing on top. You want to Half? take off a piece? Sure. That looks delicious. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Mm. Mm. Okay. Check that out. This is from the local family mart. Mm. Mm. Our milk is from 7-Eleven. Mm. <laughs> Any other announcements? We're going to do snow. Yeah. On May 31st. Weather permitting? Weather permitting? Mm. Well, I mean, if there's a typhoon, the oh, yeah, trail okay, will okay. be closed. Look at my, um, I bought some pants, mm. which I'll, I'll review this. A little Costco run. We have the BC Clothing Company convertible pants. It has a belt, built-in belt, lots of pockets, and convertible pants. You can zip off these legs and they can become shorts, like cargo shorts, elastic around the waist. So these will stay up, I think, without this belt. This is coming in at a whopping 500 grams. Everywhere. Mm. But they're twice as heavy, I weigh them, as another set, which are not convertible. They're kind of like golf pants. They're from Eddie Bauer. These Eddie Bauer's are thinner. And there's also a lot of pockets, actually. There's the Velcro back pockets on both sides. And then we have this nice little zipper pocket here. Kind of a reinforced knee here. 275 grams for the Eddie Bowers. Loose fitting? Or are they very tight? No, they're not very tight. Oh. But I wouldn't be able to pull them over a shoe or anything. Oh. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the legs on this. I don't think I'd be able to pull. I'd have to take off my shoe to take off the leg. Have yeah. you dealt with convertible pants before? I had a pair. Yeah. I liked it. You liked them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Later, mm -hmm. but the lady at the store said sometimes people have problems with the zipper oh. rubbing them, but there's another flap here which is going to protect them. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we park the car and start the hike, I may wear these. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Or should I go with the uh, ones that are half the weight? To tell you the truth, I don't think weight is going to be a, a major issue because mm -hmm. we're only going for one night. Mm -hmm. So we only need to pack enough food for that evening, the next morning, and the hike back to the car. So the food and the water is really where you get. A lot I of think it's where you get most of the weight. Yeah. And and I'm gonna if I'm gonna wear these, they're not really weight. Uh, it would true. only be going but, to be carrying back. Yeah, but you need to make sure that you know these pants are not gonna you know be uh, uncomfortable when you're hiking for six hours. Yeah. So you, you probably want to take these pants out and the other pair and, and see how it feels when you're actually hiking up in Bagua Hill or something yeah. like that. Okay, I will do a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like to get your first impressions of my pack. Yeah. And I have, if you guys haven't watched our other video, let me put it in here where Jesse talks about his pack, but I haven't actually seen it. So uh, I would, I'm gonna get my impressions of his Atunas pack. They look about the same size. Okay, here they are. Which one is the new one? <laughs> Left or right? <laughs> Yours is more colorful. Yeah, what do you think about black? Do you think it'll be hot? That's the only color they have. No, I don't think it will be hot because up there it's going to be cool. And you know, you're, you're up at 2,000, 3,000 meters. Um, it's going to be pretty cool up there. Like 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. Nighttime, even colder. So don't worry about the color. Okay. Plus, it um, can change color. Oh. You know why? No. Check out the bottom under there. Oh, okay. No, I see what you have. You have a rain cover. Yeah. Right? Okay. This is useful. This is useful. Some it's people just small. wear them even if it's not raining. Well, it, it's elastic. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wear them. Put mine on. <laughs> it's <laughs> troublesome to get in and out of your yeah, 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 I know. But. If you see a storm cloud coming, yeah, you can put it on. Sure, yeah, and yeah, so it just jams in there. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nice. Um, 
your solution that we talked about is you have a bag inside here, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I just put a, a big black thick trash bag mm -hmm. inside because this doesn't have any compartments. It's just one big bag. Wow, that is big. Yeah. That is lar definitely larger than yeah. my 36 liter. Okay. That's a 42? This is a doiter. A doiter. Doiter. These Doiter. packs are the same. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A Tunas. Doiter design. Oh, so oh what's that okay. Name? Well, Doiter is uh, sold by Tunas. I oh, think it's German. Okay. Okay. Oh. So this is a 42 liter. 42 probably. liter. It's okay. a little bit bigger than this one. Well, the first thing I noticed, yeah. which I was talking about earlier before you came in, mm -hmm. was this kind of okay, that's exterior. Pretty frame which gives you air that's right here that's right. and i just told the audience okay that that is i ran over here just a mile and my back was hot so okay. this says air contact but i'm not feeling any kind of benefit from okay from that do you actually feel yes it, it, it does. really it does. It does it helps wow yeah. okay okay so but this um, is the the duder what's the name of this path uh Futura, oh, Futura 42. 42. Eight years old. I bought it in 2013. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. So it's had a lot of wear and tear. And yeah. It looks like in pretty good condition. Yeah, it does. Um, no rips and tears. I've taken this on, on, in, on travel, traveling um, to Vietnam. And stuff yeah. Like I didn't know this was the Futura. I, like, I've mm. seen Futura, this name, a lot. Like, okay. in my research for that one and, oh. and over at the... I went to the Atunis that is on Jim Ma Road, which is much larger. This is the Atunis on Jim Ma Road. I didn't even know this existed until last week. I've been going to the one on a uh, road closer to my house. I believe Atunis is actually headquartered in Zhanghua. I have to check that out. But look, there's actually parking spaces. And Atunis carries this brand Deuter which I like, I like their hip pack. So we're gonna go in here and check it out and maybe buy a backpack. She just put a, a two, no, a five kg weight in my pack, in the pack that I might buy. Oh, she's doing it now. Hey, sweet. <laughs> That's cool. So I can see how it feels with weight. They have me climbing stairs with my pack on. <laughs> and, uh, all these places have great salespeople like who actually hike and know what they're mm. talking about. That's nice. Yeah. Well, go ahead, dig in and uh, okay, see. So, okay, so one thing I noticed about this pack is it has uh, an outside pocket mm -hmm. here oh, you can enter the pack from the top oh i got it oh yeah yeah okay if you're talking about this it's an yeah. outside pocket yeah but if you're talking about this yeah. that actually goes into the pack itself so oh. if you have something on the bottom I see. and you want to access it okay you can open that so there are actually two features here you've got a, an area where you can store things that you can get to without zipping Yes. And, and undoing everything inside the pack. Mm -hmm. And then you can also get to your stuff from from the back or from the middle. The bottom. Right, the yeah. middle or the back. And then the bottom. Top. Mm -hmm. Say, this zips all the way around. Okay. So say I have stuff that I pack all the way Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just get it out without opening up the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay, another feature that this bag has is a side pocket. Mine doesn't have side pockets. Okay, so you could probably put one of your water flasks in there. Yeah, the problem is I've tried it and I can't reach it. Oh, okay. But what I can do is take off one shoulder and kind of swing it to the side. And uh, yeah, if yeah. I use my soft flask with the straw, I could probably... Sure, <laughs> sure. Another thing that this has that mine doesn't is, is you have a pocket here on your and belt. On on both sides. So yeah, that's that's very useful. That's why I bought it. I wanted to put a soft flask in here. Okay. So I could drink. Okay. So let's see about the top. It's the same um, Alpine emergency signal stuff.
Oh, okay. Except mine has a place where you can write your country's emergency number right, right here. Which, incidentally, for Taiwan is 119. Very good for like a two or three day trip. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I was looking at a lot of smaller packs mm -hmm. because I was really kind of into the idea of fast packing just a one night. But then I thought, mm -hmm. well, maybe in the future we're going to do longer ones. Mm -hmm. Or ones where we are not going in a shelter. So we got to okay. bring in a tent. Yeah. So where are you going to put, are you going to attach anything to your backpack? Nope. No. So everything is going inside. The, the yeah. Room. There's also, maybe you didn't notice, there's also one here. Oh. Well. The side, side. Yeah. I was checking yours out. I don't see. Oh yes. You have one right here. I do. You do have a side pocket. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds, looks good. Okay, so I don't have. Oh, look at that. Um, I don't have that. Oh, you do have a side pot. I never even noticed that. It's, it's not very deep. It's tiny. Yeah, I mean you could put a, a short, maybe a small water bottle on there. Yeah, but, but it's, I would. It'd have to be the right size. That it would fall be. out. Yeah. Fall out. I don't have the kind of compact gear that Jay has because I'm using gear that is mostly you know five years old. Mm -hmm. So my backpack um, will be pretty full. I'll have my sleeping bag in there and it's not that small. And my coat, my clothes are probably gonna take up most of the space. Really? And yeah, probably 60 to 70%. That much? Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, maybe 20% will be food and 10% the other space will be water. Sleeping mat and... Okay, so the sleeping, sleeping mat, the sleeping mat, I bought this and I attached my sleeping mat to the bottom. Oh. Okay, because it's not very compact. Could it go above the brain? Like, could you, um, could you lay it here and it would, it would just make it more difficult to get things in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you could. I mean, here they have. Yeah, like, there's this too. You, what about um, this? Or yeah, I think that would just gonna slide out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think this is for sticks. Oh, this is for, for the so this is poles. this is not for a water flask. I this just so. yeah, takes this, the end of your poles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So gotcha. You just tie this. Okay, and uh, they have one here too. Yeah, both yeah. sides. So well, maybe ice axe yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, mine is only. Check out how I would like much, mm -hmm. you know, thinner. This side is for ice axe. Show them mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. And then this side is. For poles. Poles. I haven't tried that yet. I need to put some poles in there. So you are going to take a, a hiking staff. I will. I'll take the one you gave me. Okay. Mm. Great. Oh, check out video here. Right. Mm. <laughs> um, I am debating whether I'm going to go with a stick or my trekking poles. poles. Um, but I have been reading a lot of people are complaining that really ultralight carbon fiber poles. Uh, if you get them jammed between two rocks, they will snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the benefit is they're light. I didn't see many rocks up on Snow Mountain. Okay. No. Yeah. I do enjoy, and I have done it recently. This year, I've been hiking a lot with. You've seen it with uh, mm -hmm. with the poles. I like it. Mm -hmm. You know, to take some of the pressure off my my feet. It steadies you. You can yeah. use it in a defensive situation. <laughs> <laughs> A big bear or something. Yeah, like that. yeah the Taiwan black bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just you know poke around for snakes. Mm. And, you know, there's some uh, underbrush and you don't know what's there. You can use the stick to kind of push things away. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Taking along poles or a stick is very useful. Yeah. You didn't use one last time, though. No. I didn't have one, and I didn't really think I needed it that much. So. And I didn't. Actually, I didn't. But now that I have a good one, thanks to you, <laughs> I will use it. Okay. Yeah. What I really like about my pack, too, is the padding on the belts, on the waist belts. So, um, Jay's pack has that, too, and he's also got some extra padding on the back here, which I think will be really nice on a long hike. I mean, you will really appreciate this. And I wouldn't worry too much about the heat. Uh, because it's pretty cool up there. Yeah, yeah okay. it's pretty cool. Right, yeah. So I like this mm. chest strap. You see mm -hmm. how it kind of is elastic? Mm, yeah. Let me see your chest strap. Okay. 
I've tied it up a little bit oh, to make okay. it tighter. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> adjust it for your, you know, for your fit, chest size, yeah. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, this it does look very comfortable. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Actually, it does. It seems. Well, it's about the same. Maybe there's a little bit more on this. Yeah, I don't think yours is thicker. Yeah. Yeah. But the this part is yeah, it's about the same. The chest straps are about the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have load adjusters as the Yeah, oh you gotta have those. Yeah. You gotta have those. Yeah. yeah. You have a little handle on the top. My I have a kind of a thinner yep. handle. And my water hose, if I would have a oh, bladder, yeah. I do have a bladder. I can let me show you. They're both drawstring, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people have the roll top. The bladder hooks on here and lays down inside here, like this. You could probably go with two or three liters, even be enough. And then the hose goes through. Oh, that's nice. I don't have a hole in there. Here so. to to this side. I don't have that. Just the hose, out. yeah, will come out from the side here. Yeah. You know, just and then if but if this is cinched, he's just gonna put the hose through the cinch part. Mm. Is it long enough? I will put the bladder at the top. Is there a place for the bladder? No. Uh, I guess you would put well, it. Yeah, there. I could put it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's probably what it's made. For. There's a kind of pocket inside here. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice packs. Looking forward to using them and getting out on the trail. Very excited. Mm. And I'm already projecting even further out. <laughs> we were texting before uh, a couple of days ago about Jade. Yes, and um, I did a little bit of investigation about getting a permit for Jade, and I found out that they've changed some of the procedures, and it's actually easier now for foreigners uh, to get a permit. Why is that? Well, now we don't enter the draw with thousands of Taiwanese. They have a system that is, uh, that is primarily for foreigners, and this allows 24 foreigners to apply four months in advance rather than the uh, standard two months. Oh. And um, so maybe it's like a Taiwan tourism kind of promotional. Maybe it thing. could be. Yeah. And um, and you can you know you can get your name in on the draw for the lottery for a place up in uh, Pai Yun. That is the cabin. The cabin just below the summit of Jade Mountain. However, they do have one limitation: is that you can only apply four months in advance once in a year. So oh. what I'm saying is, if you apply for those days and you don't get them, oh. you've lost your your kind of foreigner uh, privilege. privilege. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, and then if you try, you can apply again, but it has to be within then you the have regular to, two right. months. Yes, and you apply as a you know standard application, mm. not as a foreigner application. Okay. We we probably need to go on Monday and Tuesday. I think that would be our yeah. best bet. Yeah. I Seven like those weekends. days. Weekends are... Because I don't have a lot of class. Tough. Yeah. yeah. And I like to spend the weekend with, with family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Introduction about mm. uh, Jade Mountain. Mm. Okay. It's the tallest. Mm, the tallest mountain in Taiwan. Mm. Um, I like Snow Mountain a little bit more than Jade because it's, I think the scenery is a little bit more open. But Jade is a, is a great mountain. It's slightly easier. Yeah, this now there's not as much elevation until you are actually climbing up from Pai Yun to the summit. Mm -hmm. So when you start, I don't think you start pretty high from a place called Tatajia, and you just you park there. Uh, you park a little bit below, okay, and you walk to the trailhead. And before you get to the trailhead, you have to get your police permit, mm -hmm. which you get before you start hiking. And then it's probably around an eight kilometer walk, but it's pretty flat. Okay. Before you? Before you get to Paiyun and then you start real climbing up to the top. Real climbing? Well, it's steep. Pretty steep. Yeah, and at the top, yeah. you have to be pretty careful when you're, you know, walking around the summit. It's kind of like how we were at Yuan Zui Shan. Yuan Zui, oh, not that hard.
Or not that many rooms. It doesn't have like this pointy peak. No. <laughs> no. Okay. There's quite a lot of space at the top for, you know, 30, yeah. 40 people. I heard Chilai Shan mm. is pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're wise, if you're careful, if you're, you know, you don't take any unnecessary risks, I think Chilai Shan is, is doable. It's one of the top 10, right? Mm -hmm. That people like to yeah, climb. Yeah, it's over 3,000 meters. Yeah, he knows his mountains. What other mountains do you know in the top 10 range? Top 10? Oh, there's the um, Beida Wushan. Uh, I climbed that uh, many, many years ago. That's in Pindol. Oh. Yeah, and that's a really steep climb. Is that like an overnighter? Yes, it is. Wow, you where do you to... stay? There's a cabin? There's no, there's no cabin. You have to camp. So yeah. you took a tent? Yeah, we took a tent. I didn't know about this. See, I've that known was... this guy forever. <laughs> I didn't know you did that. I was living in Taichung at that time. It was before I even married. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you say we... I went with Brian. I think I introduced to you him to you once. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Two man yeah. tent. Wow. Good. Would you do that again? Mm. Did you like that hike? It was okay. But it's a long drive, mm. all the way to Bingdong. That's true. So we, we left Taichung at midnight. Mm. And we arrived at the trailhead around 4, 3.30 or 4. And we slept in the van until the sun came up. What van? It, we went with a club. We oh, actually, okay. we went with a hiking club. Tai oh, Chung I Chung. see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then that's we, less yeah. of a drive than we're going to have for snow or jade. Yeah, but it's all night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could leave later. You could leave at 5. I, I don't know why they like to leave at 12. Because we, we hiked to like a, a camping area. It took only about maybe four, four hours. Huh. And we, we, we ate and we camped. And then the next morning we got up early and we hiked to the, to the peak. How long and, did that take? Well, it was a long hike. I think it, it kicked my ass. Yeah, <laughs> kicked my ass. But I wasn't that fit in those days. Yeah, I, mean, I wasn't. I wasn't a runner. So you're, wasn't... you're more fit now. I'm fitter now than I was 25 years ago. Wow. Here's to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 25 years ago, I didn't run. Yeah. I didn't walk that much. I mm -hmm. was a swimmer. I was about him. A little bit of hiking. What else is on your radar for running? Well, as far as getting an ultra under our belts, I mean, we both in interest, are interested in doing ultra. There's a 43K in Miao Li. <laughs> Just a hair over a marathon. Yeah. yeah. But it's on the coast. In, so, ooh. And I think it's pretty flat. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking well, I like about some that. elevation, but that does sound interesting. And it's in December, which would be a little bit cooler. I mean, yeah. usually, you know, in Taiwan, November can still be quite warm. That wouldn't be but, too far of a drive. No, it's very close. It? It's like, I checked on the GP, on the, on the Google Maps, it's like a 40 minute drive. Hmm. December. December 12th. Check it out. I will check it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We've rambled along enough. And uh, sorry we talk about other stuff besides the packs. If you came to, <laughs> to view the pack, please don't give me a, a thumbs down for that. Mm. But uh, if you're in Taiwan, you know, this is what we do. So <laughs> give me your comments. You know, I'd like to know if, what you're doing and as far as your hiking and your racing. And yeah. that's about it. Okay, until the next time, uh, next time, when, when are we going to post again as a, as a Well, you can give me a race report on... Oh, right, I'm doing a half. Okay, I'm doing a half in, in 10, nine days. Oh boy, I'm yeah. excited, I'm excited. All right, we'll do that. Oh, uh, one last thing mm. before we go is my camp pillow. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm so excited about this. Okay. Yeah. You know so, how? It's uh, actually, it's, you can use that on airplanes too. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what it's for. But I tried it out, and I think I could get a four-hour mm -hmm. sleep. That's comfortable. With that, yeah, that's nice. I didn't like. Four hours. <laughs> I didn't like the felt, so I put this. Mm. Oh, cover okay, on. okay. And so, where did you get that? That's nice. Well, that is a story. You have to watch the video. <laughs> See ya.
I was looking for something to go on my snow mountain hike. And it just so happened uh, my wife's cousin recently got a job at the American Institute in Taiwan. And he gave me this inflatable pillow. And here it is. But I didn't like the feel. It's kind of like a felt. And the solution of not liking the feel was to put cover on it. Super light, even with the cover. And it's so comfortable. Where did I get the cover? The cover comes with this. This is a neck massager. I got it from Awesome as a, an extra gift with our massage chair, which I didn't do my video on yet, but it's coming soon. So anyway, solution to camp pillow right here.